You should have. <laughs> Must be the art scars. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, y'all. Oh, my gosh. Great, great message today, Rev. Rita. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I won't have to do my first quote uh, about the battle by Florence Scovel Shin. Oh, no, no problem. But I do have a quote from uh, Reverend James, if you met him when he was here and we brought him up. He said, um, is life living us or are we living life? And I went, hmm, thought provoking. Yes. But I was thinking of games, the games people play. The games people play now, every day and every night now. Boy, there's a whole energy in here because we're the charging station. We're that electricity. We came here today because we're like, I need some more charge, more charge. Plug me in. That's the title of next week's talk. Plug me in. And if you're wondering, click, share, subscribe. <laughs> What's the fourth one? Like, whatever. Um, so anyway, I was thinking of, we had a little uh, game night for Lolita because she loved playing games. And two thoughts came to mind. We always told Lolita, if you don't know who Lolita is, she's a founding member, and she's transitioned out of the body that we know, but she is very much still alive. And she is electrifying in this room. But anyway, she loved games, and all I can remember is always saying, Rita, Patrick, a game? Want to play a game? And then Rita and I, being the cruel, cruel people that we are, no, Lolita, I know, you're busy, you're always busy, but we never really did, but I don't feel bad about it. But what I do wonder, what I do wonder, no, I don't feel bad about that, but what I do want to know is how I identify with I don't play games, which is an absolute lie. Because I do like playing games once I play them. But if I don't play them, then I just say every time, oh, no, I don't play games. I don't play games. But anyway, so they had this little goodbye, uh, hello, little game night. And the five people that were at this table, because one was an understudy, um, came in later. So there was five. They're all here, but I won't be even looking at any of them at all. To, and so this is what I learned by the observer, because I didn't play. I just watched. And oh, what you can learn by watching. <laughs> So I don't know, I might have to contradict a few things about this rules and law because all four people at one time thought they had the rules and you were not the one doing the right rules and it's just like, wow. And they were laughing and competing and going, oh. And then they would say, well, if we were playing by my rules, then that wouldn't be occurring right now. But since we're not, and, and they were all very polite with one another. And then one was laughing and then I could see the little, and then the understudy came in because one left and joined another thing. And then she joyously walked into the game of life. And then they all started telling her what to do. <laughs> Every move she made was absolutely looked upon. And she would say, I'll move that. No. Put it over here. No. No, it would be too long if you put it there. I'm thinking, oh my God. So needless to say, the understudy who came in was just rattled. And I'm thinking to myself, how many times in life are we just rattled? by everybody thinking that they have the rules, right? Oh my God, so anyway, it went on, they had ice cream and they were still and looking at each other and I was taking pictures of everybody's hands so that I could pass it around in case they needed to look at it. I think that's called cheating. Um, but anyway, I had a blast not playing. So sometimes I like to play the game of life, and then sometimes I don't. Now, that just came out of absolutely nowhere. Oh. It was fun. It was fun. And she, but I have to say, it was just really wild to watch. The, 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 you know, we're just having fun, you know, and the competitive is like, no, no, we're going to go to, yeah. And then I'm going, oh. And then they just laughed it off, had another drink, and it was all, I mean, I mean, had another whatever they were doing. So anyway, ice cream. Ice cream. Um, but I digressed for a moment, and we are, but actually it was right on target, wasn't it? Because we all play that game of life and think that there's one rule, 
And each one of us wants to play that. And so it gives, there's a real give and take in life as far as I'm concerned when we're playing that game that we can actually take a moment and say, ah, look how they're playing that game. I wouldn't play it that way, but I also wouldn't tell them how to play it. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, did, did I go over to this side? But now, now I need to talk about something that just popped up yesterday and I have just been, I have just been, poor Reverend Rita, I have been throwing this metaphor out to her. And so, it's about the oyster. Uh-huh, oyster. How we shift over, right? I don't have to play the game like I was talking about that. I can go over and talk about an oyster. How many are familiar with the oyster and the pearl? The beautiful pearl. And I'm looking out right now at so many incredible pearls, this incredible pearl that, that is in the midst of it. So I got very interested in that whole idea of the oyster getting irritated and what comes from the irritation. So I want to, nobody in this room has ever been irritated, but I have found, I have found a poem, and not a quote, but an actual poem, by my favorite author, Unknown, and <laughs> now I want you to pretend for a moment that you are children and that I'm reading you a story. There once was an oyster, whose story I tell, who found that some sand had got in its shell. It was only a grain, but it gave him great pain, for oysters have feelings although they're so plain. Now, did he berate the harsh working of fate that had brought him to such a deplorable state? Did he curse the government, cry for an election, and claim the sea should have given him protection? <laughs> no. He said to himself, as he lay on a shell, since I can't remove it, I shall try to improve it. Since I cannot remove it, I shall try to improve it. Now the years have rolled around, as the years always do, and he came to his ultimate destiny stew. There's more. How easily they turn. And the small grain of sand that had bothered him so was a beautiful pearl, all richly aglow. Now the tale has a moral, for isn't it grand what an oyster can do with a morsel of sand? What couldn't we do if we'd only begin with some of the things that get under our skin? Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. I'm not just a pretty face. I want everyone to just, I mean, you're going to get it eventually. My God, within. This is incredible. And, I, and what it did for me was, it made me aware of how the slightest little thing and we sometimes give up. The moment it's uncomfortable. And what I like to think of this incredible, incredible, oh my God, what couldn't we do if we only begin with some of the things that get under our skin? That if we took that and said, what do I need to know? What is really happening here? They call it irritation. We call it divine discontent. We were meant to continually grow, to expand. We weren't meant ever, and define it how you want, to have a mediocre life. We were never meant to the moment that there is an irritation to stop and say, yeah, I tried. We do that with treatment sometimes. We go in there and we'll do a treatment and they'll walk out the door, right? And they'll go, hmm. Nothing's happened. 
That's odd. I thought it was going to manifest immediately. Wow. Wow, the oyster, what it and that's what we are. That's what this teaching's about. That underneath, underneath it all, underneath all the stuff that we we deem so irritating, all underneath it there is a pearl. And is that just a, a goody two shoe way of looking at it? You're damn right. Yes. Because the other, when I'm thinking about only the irritation, there's nothing that's working. All I'm creating is more. So what gets under your skin? I'm thinking to myself, it's incredible that the little things that I think are so important, right? And half of them are made up because, you know, you, you see somebody doing something or saying something and you're taking it all the way that you want to interpret it, right? Are we allowing the question, are we allowing the grains of sand to disrupt the pearl that lives within us? And I really took a very, very, very big look at that. And Pablo Picasso, for all you art people, he says, the meaning of life is to find your gift. That's the, only, the, mean, that's the meaning. And then the purpose of life is to give it away is to give it all away. That's what, how, and what, how I want to live my life. I want to, what is Patrick's gift? I have very many, but what is but that one gift? And I just want to give it. We would never worry about lack or anything if my only purpose was to give it away. Oh, but that's frightening, right? What if I give it away and, and there's no more? That's impossible. We are the very more. What if I give it away and they don't give it back? They're not supposed to. That's not why you give it. <laughs> People talk about tithing. Oh, you know that word, the frightening word. 10%? Who made up 10%? I'm going to talk about tithing for just a second because what happens is you're giving that out and then we go, well, what happens if it doesn't come back, as Rita was saying? It's not a uh, 401. It's not, because I, I have treated with people just sweating through tithing on the mainland. Nobody here. But just sweating about giving. And, and they go, I can't, I can't. I gave and nothing came back. It was supposed to be ten times. I said, who, who, what do you mean? What kind of investment is I'm going to give it to you and I get ten times back? What kind of bank is that? We already have it all. That's why I get to give it. So this isn't a point about, oh, how do you get more money? It's about how do you get more consciousness? The consciousness of an oyster that says, I'm really irritated right now. And I don't like it. And sometimes it's a shell or it's a parasite that gets... This is irritating. And sometimes irritation is good because it's waking you up. It's making you uncomfortable. Oh, uncomfortable. I don't like it. Do you? But boy, does it move me. And I'm going to tell you something, if it moves me to make a pearl, I'm even more excited about it. The, the play, to play the game of life, we must first learn what kind of life we want to live. Whew. We think we know, don't we? Oprah Winfrey, you remember her? <laughs> she said, out of all the years of her interviews, no matter how successful, no matter how famous, the line, the question that always stumped 99% of the people is, what do you want? And you would think that they would have known because they were achieving it. But it's not an easy question. Really take a moment to ask yourself, what do you want? And I've got a whole list. I was telling Rita, I go, I have a whole journal filled with what I want. But I have to know what I choose. Wanting and choosing are really two different things. Because I want a lot of things, but am I going to choose it? Will I have the audacity to claim it, as we do in treatment? Will I have the audacity to say, that's my home? Right? And we were talking about that since I'm going to 
piggyback for a moment on the home thing. Let me talk about the homes because I have had more calls. First of all, I love you, but we're not real estate agents. But there are plenty in the, I don't know, we don't have, the, but we do have access to people. Put it up on the board. But let me tell you what you're going to do. If you need a home, anybody needs a home to live in, this is what we're going to do. And I gave this advice to a few people this week. Prepare. Prepare ye the way, as they said in God's bell. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And guess what the Lord is? The law. Prepare ye the way of the law. Because the law is going to open up all those doors. So what you do is you, you go, oh, I have to be out in a few days, five days, a week, a month. Start packing with joy. Ooh. Go down to Target. Do you know they got a Target on the island now? <laughs> Target, baby. Um, so they got that. So you go down to Target and you start picking out stuff for your new home. But I don't have a new home, Reverend Patrick. Well, you ain't going to either if you keep thinking about not having a new home. Get down there, find just something little. Now I talked to someone, they said they were planning their Thanksgiving in their new home. Yeah, that's what you do. You plan for it. You don't have a relationship, not that anybody needs one in this room. You don't have a relationship, start moving the closets around, man. You've got all your stuff there. Ain't nobody coming in there with all your clothes. <laughs> Make room on the bed. Stop sprawling. <laughs> Make room. Make room, you want a relationship. Make room. Prepare. Prepare you. <laughs> did I just say that? Yes, I did online. I said that. And that goes for all of you, too. Whatever it is we want, you want a business, start planning it. You want to be a singer? You want to be speaking international? Go speak. Go stand on the corner if you have to. Speak. Prepare ye the way. And it, and it starts opening up. And then your, your, your frequency starts opening up. And you go, you go, but this gets really scary. I'll do a treatment and they'll say, I need my rent by the first of the month. I don't have it. I don't have it. I go, yeah. Well, let's just prepare for when you do. Write the check. You don't have to give it to them yet. Write the check. It seems so simple, doesn't it? I'm going to break some news to you. I hope this doesn't hurt anybody's feelings, but life was not meant to be difficult. Never was and never will be. Never. It was meant to be enjoyed, loved, and it is meant to have everything we want if you can accept it. If you can accept it. Ah, if you're ever wondering in the midst of this time that feels sometimes very pressured and very, I call it the 11th hour, you know that one? Oh, my God, I was the king. I, I ran the club, by the way, of the 11th hour, man. I just want to torture myself all the way to the very last minute so I can manifest it then. No! Manifest it now. This is, this is a little something from heart resiliency. The adult heartbeat, you know how I did pregnancy a couple weeks ago, but I thought I'd go somewhere else today. The adult heart beats an average of 101,000 times a day. Oh, hold on. Circulating some 1,900 gallons of blood through 60,000 miles of arteries, blood vessels, and capillaries. Now, you, do you really think there's nothing you can't do? <laughs> do you really think that a house is difficult to, when you're right now, as you're sitting there, 60,000 miles, you're pumping around, and you can't even see those 60,000 miles. Whew. Henry Ford, I'll end with him. Not that he's going to be the most popular spiritual mystic in the world, but he has some good things to say. He was the one that thought there would be a cool idea. Oh, it's always frightening to end on a metaphor of either sports or cars for me. <laughs> but I'm going in because you know why? Because i got to show myself I can do it. So here's the Henry Ford had this idea of an eight-cylinder. Remember those? Yeah, and I, I guess they go into some kind of a block. Yeah, but anyway, so, he, so he, told, he told his engineers, this is what I want. And they said, uh, Mr. Ford, that's impossible. He said, oh, no, 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 I don't do impossible. 
As a matter of fact, it's been recommended to me by Napoleon Hill to go get your dictionary and find the impossible in the, di in the dictionary and cut it out nicely so it never exists in your dictionary again. <laughs> And so Henry Ford continues on. They came back six months later and they said, can't do. And he said, oh, yes, you will. I don't care how long it takes. They went back, came back in a year. I can't do it. He said, we don't do impossible. And this is what his quote is, I want it and I'll have it. Now, he didn't say I want it and I'll have it now or you're fired. He says, I don't care how long it takes you. I don't care how long it takes you, but I'm going to get what I want. Do you feel the power behind that? Not I'm going to get what I want at your expense. No, I'm going to get what I want. I'll pay you. I'll pay you for five years. But I'm going to get the little eight-cylinder uh, car that I want to produce. Wow. Wow. The power in saying I want it. I want it. I'm going to have it. That is very powerful. And then someone said to me yesterday... And concerning a relationship problem, challenge. Said, I don't want to end a relationship because it will be a failure. And I'm thinking to myself about failure. The only failure that ever we ever can have is by giving up. Especially giving up when we have an entire, entire force, a whole charging center, Roseanne, a whole charging center. As a matter of fact, Roseanne, you could have actually have stuck your finger right there and it would have, and you, you would have been charged up. I'm telling you, that's how powerful I believe you are. But good thing you had Rita because she's powerful and got you home. Oh, 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 they turn again. First of all, I just want to let you know this is such a day and moment filled with joy as I'm looking out at you. No matter what we decide to do, we have it all. If you have a, need a home, you have one. And the home starts right here, right here in that heart. There is no one in this room that cannot have exactly what they choose to have. There is no one looking in right now that cannot have exactly what they want. That's who we are. That's who we are. And we will always be that. Do you believe me? Well, that's a good enough start, right? Or as we say in our sessions in our beautiful times of spiritual mind treatment, when the person looks and says, you know, Patrick, I really, it's, I'm, I'm in such pain right now, I cannot believe that. And I say, well, you're in good hands because I can. Can you believe that I can? And the answer is yes. And so until you do, we're here for you. Namaste. Remembering all of that. <laughs> that bed sprawling thing happening. Good.